elections. Elections serve uh, important functions. Um, and I want to give you a couple of different ways to think about elections. That one thing, uh, I think the, the positive way to think about elections, well-run elections, elections in, in uh, countries with, with good governance, elections give voters a chance to decide what the government will do and input into policy and input into the direction of the country. But I would also point out there are lots of elections around this, con in the, in this world where there may only be one candidate on the ballot or there is no transparency and nobody really understands how they work. Or the polling will say that it's a close race and the party in power will win 95 to 5. Uh, Saddam Hussein used to win elections with 98% support. And these are obviously not true. And so another function of elections uh, is to provide legitimacy to the government, whether that government is legitimate or not. So you say we're going to have an election, you have an election. And uh, uh, whether it's a fair election or not, one of the results is the government now gets to claim that it has the legitimate support of the people, although that's clearly not always, not, not always true. So there's three types of elections we're going to talk about. One is the primary, which we've already done a whole chapter on, so you should know this is where parties choose their nominees. The other is the general election, the second is the general election, and this is where winners of the primaries run, and the winner of a general election actually gets to be in office. So here in 2012, as, as I'm recording this, Mitt Romney won the Republican Party primary, uh, Barack Obama uh, won the Democratic one, which makes sense because he was already president. And uh, as I'm recording this, the two of them are uh, locked up uh, in the general election. The winner is going to be president. But you also have elections uh, on individual issues. Uh, you might have a referendum. This is where people vote uh, to remove a law or to not remove a law um, uh, or to, uh, to amend the, the state constitution, for example. Not the, the federal, but the state constitution. Uh, you might have initiative. Some states have initiative uh, petitions. This is where you can uh, put uh, laws up for a vote by the people. Um, California, for example, has lots and lots and lots of these. Um, you also might have recalls. We've recently, in, uh, in recent years here, had a number of recalls. This is where somebody's already been elected to office, uh, but, but uh, a petition will start to remove them from office, and then the voters get to vote on that. So those are some kind of special types of elections. We're going to look at three elections in particular to just to observe how elections have changed over time. So let's look at the election of, eight, of 1800. This is the first time one party leaves office and a second party takes over. Jefferson, who wins this election, calls it a revolution as real as that of 1776. And what he means is it's a change in party power. The Federalists are leaving and Jefferson's Democratic Republicans are coming in. There are no primaries, no conventions, and no speeches. Uh, the candidates, Jefferson and Adams, are picked by party leaders. We're talking a small group of people who tend to be House members and Senate members who get together behind a closed door and decide who will be the leaders. There's no voting in the way you would think of it. Uh, the the uh, electors, those people who will choose the president, are chosen by state legislatures. Um, and so the individual people have no say in this election. There's no convention. There's no party convention. Uh, nobody gives any speeches. In fact, both candidates are, are basically uh, pretend they don't want to be president. There is no such thing as campaigning uh, by the candidates anyway. Uh, sometimes their friends will go out and claim they should be president. Newspapers are, are there, but they're extremely partisan. Uh, both the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans had their own newspapers, which uh, in some cases the party, or in the case of Jefferson later, uh, the, the government itself will pay for. And they, they make no attempt at objectivity. They make no attempt to... Uh, tell an unbiased story. Um, of course, you're not campaigning to voters, you're campaigning to state legislatures. So you're trying to appeal to elites, you're trying to appeal to the powerful. Now this this election was a little strange because the way they had it set up at the time, the vice president would, was the second place finisher and then they gave every elector two votes and so the idea was is that the electors uh, who supported Jefferson, because that's how this is going to work out, they would all vote for Jefferson, and one of them with, and and they would all vote for Aaron Burr, except one would withhold his vote for Burr, so Jefferson would have the most votes, and Burr would have the second most. Of course, Burr enters into a scheme here to steal the election from Jefferson by having that guy who was supposed to not vote for him vote for him, um, and it's going to take a long time before they get this sorted out, and Jefferson becomes president. Of course, if nobody gets a majority of the electoral votes, or if there's a tie, it goes to the House of Representatives for the tiebreaker, and that's what happens here. By 1896, 
The Democrats are demanding unlimited coinage of silver uh, to create inflation because poor people tend to like inflation because inflation makes the money that they owe in debt uh, go down in value and therefore is easier to pay off. William Jennings Bryant, who had previously been a third party candidate, had been a populist, a preacher from Nebraska, will win the Democratic Party nomination with his cross of gold speech about uh, silver. The Republicans run William McKinley, um, and we have enormous amounts of corporate spending in this election. McKinley is the candidate of the wealthy, the candidate of the corporations, and through his handler, a man named Mark Hanna, um, he will uh, be able to rally incredible amounts of, uh, of, of business dollars to spend on the election. Uh, he outspends the Democrats something like 16 to 1. Uh, it is interesting because McKinley runs the old-fashioned way, the traditional way, where you pretend like you don't want to be president. In fact, he just sat on his front porch in Ohio for the entire time. Well, William Jennings Bryant will pioneer a new type of campaigning where he actually goes out and asks for your vote. Bryant will, uh, will go around the country in a special train and stop and give speeches all over the place. And he's really the first presidential candidate to openly run for president uh, after Bryant. All pr uh, candidates did that, but Bryant kind of invented that. 2004, of course, we have George Bush winning his second term. He's the fourth Republican since McKinley to win a second term. Uh, it was an intense election. Uh, Bush, uh, some question his legitimacy because of the 2000 election uh, in which the Supreme Court had to step in and stop Florida from recounting votes in order to allow Bush to win, uh, a decision we'll talk about later when we get to the legislative branch. Uh, Bush, of course, by then we've had 9-11. Uh, Bush will uh, take the United States military into both Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and will become an incredibly polarizing, controversial figure. The election is notable for being uh, negative, on, on, uh, particularly on the Republican side, as they ruthlessly attacked uh, the Democrat John Kerry. Um, although, of course, many uh, Democrats had some unpleasant things to say about George Bush as well. Uh, lots of money was spent on this election. Uh, uh, both by individuals um, and, and by uh, 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 corporate uh, donors. And it was an, an, an extremely negative election. Here we look at, you can kind of see the way things are shaking out these days where the West Coast, the Northeast, and the Midwest tends to be Democratic, and the, uh, the, the South and the, the West, um, the interior West anyway, tend to be Republican. 